John Coop. Thank you so much. I never thought I would win an award and ask Michael Smith to hold it for me. But I, this, this feels right. There's something about this that feels right to me. No, I really, this is absolutely amazing. I couldn't believe when I was nominated. There's 30 books I could tell you I like a lot more than mine, but I uh, feel the love from everybody and the support. Thank you so very much. It's quite awesome. Uh, thank you, thank you. Um, I really felt the Lord led me to write this book, and people say, how do you know the Lord leads you to do something? And I just say, it's not that hard for, for godly men. You know what God wants you to do because your wife tells you. So I don't, it's not even, it's not even that hard, okay? So my wife, it's time to write a book. Yes, ma'am. In sincerity, I do want to say this. I, I wish that Every man was blessed to have a faithful, praying wife like mine, so thank you to Corey. And uh, she's absolutely awesome. A huge thank you to Zach and Velvet. Um, I couldn't have done this without them. I want to thank Seth Haynes, my editor, for making me sound coherent. And if you would please indulge me, I would like to tell you a very quick story, because people ask me why I write the book. This is the best way to say it. In the 1500s, there was a bishop in England named Hugh Latimer who became so convinced of the reformers' concept of salvation, that salvation was through faith alone, not by works. Faith alone because of what Jesus Christ has done for us, not about what I do. He became so convinced of that that he gave his life for the gospel. He became a martyr. Fox's Book of Martyr has him recorded 1555, burned at the stake, along with another martyr called Nicholas Ridley, and some of the last words that Hugh Latimer ever spoke to Nicholas Ridley as they were being taken out to be burned at the stake for their faith in Christ, this is what he said. He used some of his last breaths to encourage someone else along the way. Play the man, Master Ridley. Play the man. We shall this day light such a candle by God's grace in England as I trust shall never be put out. Play the man. What I believe he's saying is this, that we are in a time where God has chosen for himself to be glorified in that way at that time that the gospel would go forth to the nations and the name of Jesus would be made more famous and the gospel would be put out forward. Play the man. That's your role to play. Play the man. I say that today because I wrote this book because I've been so absolutely heartbroken at the amount of friends that I've had who have decided that their wives are no longer the ones for them, their kids are no longer the ones for them, Jesus is no longer the ones for them. We live in a time of great, unfortunately, revival in the church not revival of the gospel of Christ, but a revival of ancient heresies that have snuck into the church and we have been ill-equipped to handle it. Somebody say amen or I'll preach all day up here. If I could say absolutely anything, if I could be so bold and so humble, if you would allow me to say this, anything I could say to everybody here, brothers and sisters, play the man. Play the man. This is the day, this is the hour. And if we don't build our lives upon the unchanging word of God, then who knows what gospel we are going to deliver to our children and our children's children. In the name of Jesus, play the man. Thank you so very much.